Hi, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Stuller. I'm a board certified addiction psychiatrist. If you or a loved one is suffering with an addiction, please don't wait for help. Um, it's been my experience working with thousands of addicted patients that addiction is a one-way elevator down, which can end with DUIs, probation, uh, incarceration, institutionalization, uh, and even death. Uh, it's easy for us to intercede and help you to first cut down we call it a harm reduction approach, and then to help you get some traction to stay stop drinking. It's easy to learn how to stop drinking, but to learn how to stay stopped is an acquired skill. And where our expertise and the House of Freedom's expertise is teaching you how to stay stopped through acquired uh, skills and knowledge. Uh, I've spent my career helping people now for years, understanding that recovery is an acquired skill, and I can teach you these acquired skills. Also, there's been a wonderful advent of technology that now makes us more cutting edge than ever in helping you to recover from uh, an addiction of any type. Uh, we're able to do genetic testing to see which medications or supplements you may do well on, or to help you to understand if you're self-medicating an addiction. Uh, genetic testing also tells us who may be at risk for addiction. Uh, it'd be very nice to know if, as a younger person, if you have a positive family history of addiction uh, or you've got a potential um, genetic type that would put you at risk for addiction, you may never want to try alcohol uh, or drugs for that matter. Um, we also have new technology in the forms of brain imaging. Brain imaging has come a long way in the form of functional MRIs, SPECT imaging. Um, uh, these images are now coming together to help us get a three-dimensional look at the brain. We're also in the process of the brain initiative and the completion of the human genomic project, which are giving us more information on the actual wiring of the brain. When I do brain spect imaging for a living, I can tell you exactly the condition of your brain, and, and it's not to actually to discourage you, it's actually to inspire you. Uh, we call it brain envy, to begin to do better uh, with your recovery. Uh, as I like to say for pot smokers, you can't argue with the picture of your brain. And the beauty of the imaging is that you can actually see where you are uh, in your recovery process. We also go on to re-image your brain two months later, six months later, a year later to show you that you're making progress. Um, it also keeps me accountable by having to show you that your brain is gonna get better and better every six months, every year, um, every few weeks, just from eating a good diet, exercising, taking multivitamins. I want you to know this statistic, that if you're under the age of 15 and you have drank, you are at four to five times more likely to develop an addiction as an older adult. Also, if you happen to suffer with a comorbid depression or anxiety, you may end up self-medicating uh, your drug, uh, self-medicating yourself with drugs or alcohol in order to calm your brain. Uh, SPECT imaging helps us to look at both surface views of the brain and how hard uh, your brain is working or if it's not working hard enough. And we can actually target these individual areas for treatment. For example, uh, people ask me a lot of times, are all brains the same? And they're not. You might be self-medicating an anxious type of depression. So Additional testing that I use include um, uh, genetic testing. Uh, we do nutritional testing. Uh, as you know, when you drink alcohol or if you use drugs on a regular basis, you're depleting your vitamin and mineral stores. And I can tell you exactly um, from a simple blood test how depleted you may be and the importance of getting uh, supplements and food groups back on board to help you recover more quickly. We additionally do neurotransmitter testing. I can tell you how fast you turn over your dopamine or your serotonin. I can tell you who is likely to end up smoking marijuana and ending up in a psychotic state, uh, certainly the same with K2 or Spice, or who might do ecstasy and have a good time and who might end up in the hospital simply by looking at your genetic testing. Regular serum laboratory testing is help, helpful to us in telling you exactly how your liver and kidneys are doing. I want you to know these numbers and I'm interested in teaching the patient how to understand those numbers so that it's not up to your doctor to let you know
but you're able to ask your physician the questions that you need to ask and they will teach you the numbers so that you know exactly how you're coming along. Um, additionally, with SPECT imaging, uh, I can show you the importance of taking an omega-3 or a multivitamin. When you look at the devastating statistics of alcoholism and uh, drug use in the United States, it's not, it's not a mystery to me. Uh, alcohol and drugs uh, increase the release of a neurochemical called dopamine. Dopamine is a reward molecule and it makes you enjoy drinking or enjoying uh, doing drug use. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is over time you begin to deplete dopamine in your brain so that if you're not using, you don't feel normal. Eventually, you next find yourself drinking or smoking or doing drugs just to feel normal, not even to get high. I can uh, often like to tell patients that I'm like your Navy SEAL. I can tell you where the booby traps hide in recovery. Uh, for example, I can tell you what to expect at a month out or three months out, that sometimes your friends are really frenemies or that uh, even at a year, people that you think are pulling for you may not really be pulling for you. Often as addicted patients get better, family members lose um, their ability to control you and they may revolt or want you to relapse, unbeknownst to them and possibly to you. And this is where a second set of eyes is helpful in the process. Also, a lot of people relapse around their one year anniversary and I think part of that is what feels like excitement can often feel like anxiety. And again, I find all the time that patients will try to self-medicate that anxiety. And often there's a habit component involved. People, uh, I had one patient recently that came in and he was drinking three beers a night, um, ran on an electrician, uh, or he was an electrical type store owner. And I asked him, I said, how often is that second or third drink just a habit? Uh, and he said most of the time it was. And so what we did is I said, could you just cut down that third beer on Monday through Sunday? So initially the strategy was that we would just cut out one beer a day, uh, Monday through Sunday. Then we started targeting that second beer. Usually one beer is enough, but by habit, just like putting extra salt or pepper on your um, potatoes, you will add that second beer just simply out of habit. And so our game plan with this individual patient is we got him down to one drink seven days a week. After that, we brought him down to just drinking on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sundays, and eventually just on the weekends. As we did this, the transformation was remarkable. Uh, his eyes got clearer. He was surprised himself that he was better with memory recall, that he was performing better on the job. And guess what? His sleep improved as well. Uh, alcohol in particular is very disruptive to sleep architecture. We also do home sleep testing. We often see that alcohol metabolizes out of your system about 3 or 4 a.m. So although alcohol helps to induce sleep, what we ultimately see is that it causes you to have early morning awakenings and therefore daytime fatigue which then becomes disruptive to your job performance.